everyone, this is Brittany Bond. Welcome back to another episode. And today I'm going to talk about how to create positive manifestations in your life. This is something that so many of my friends and well, people randomly message me about all the time. Brittany, how do you make positive manifestations? You seem like you have a life that you really enjoy. You seem very in your feminine. It seems like everything's working out. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> Yes, thank you. And I would love for all of you guys to also have this and your own version of this, right? And there's a lot of things that I have learned along the way that I want to share some of it with you because there's a lot of stuff out there that I feel can be very confusing when it comes to quote-unquote positive manifestation because a lot of people, well, first off, I invite you to take a deep breath with me. So just exhale everything and then breathe in through your stomach all the way up your chest and through your head so breathe in and when you get to the top hold it for a little bit and then when you breathe out just let whatever air needs to come out and whatever sounds <sighs> and then notice how you feel in your body right now I always feel like this extra burst of energy right when I'm about to start a podcast because like recording one because I'm like I get so excited to share all of this stuff with you guys that I'm like it's like this like ding, and then I have to let it like settle in my body so thank you uh, for joining me in this deep breath it was as much for me as it was for all of you so you know when I was a kid like I always believed that things could get better than what they were what was currently <laughs> my reality you know being raised in a cult and having an abusive dad and just having my external reality just be pretty negative I would say at least from an emotional standpoint and I was very I am a very sensitive person and as a child I was a very sensitive child and I didn't really understand why everything was so negative and loud and hard and you know at one point my dad was dying we thought we was, he was dying in the, in the hospital and we didn't have any money and I just remember being like I just serve better than this and not in a way where I'm like I'm better than anyone else it was more of just like I really could visualize in my head and in my body and feel it in my body of a different reality like a different I like to call them timelines like I was like this is not the timeline I'm meant for. Like, I know that I'm meant for a better one than this, like one that felt better in my body. And even when I was little, like I was, I started journaling when I was 12 um, because I didn't have anyone who really understood me. I have two sisters, but they are on a very different <laughs> timeline, different vibration. And so I would talk to myself in my journal and I basically was talking to my higher self since I was 12 and it was really the only thing that helped me to feel sane in my life like made me feel like I wasn't crazy because I would have this whole inner dialogue with myself like I would just be like Brittany how are you doing today or you know I would tell myself the things that I wished that I would hear from the outside like you're doing a really good job and and you deserve to be treated with love just like you treat everyone else and like and I would just say these like really nice things to myself and and then like I would write out what I would love to have like what was my current reality right then in that moment and then what I would love to manifest my current reality to be within three months from then and I would write these little notes to myself and keep it in a so I'd have my normal journal and then I would write these like manifesting letters to myself <laughs> I think I don't even know where like I wasn't allowed to watch tv growing up uh, because of, you know, growing up in a cult. Um, but for some reason, my dad, because my dad liked to read, he allowed us to read stuff in the library, but he didn't realize that I was reading everything I could get my hands on in the library. <laughs> like, uh, since I was little, I was just reading stuff in the adult section. Like, I learned about sex. I learned about psychology, manifesting, science, all the things they were trying to keep from us. I just read in books. I was just, like, constantly reading. I would read a book a day in school because I had to take the bus to school in like an hour and a half each way. And then I'd get home and do my homework and I wasn't really allowed to go out and play with anyone because my dad was controlling and abusive. So then I would just read more. And along the way, I found stuff about manifesting. And so one of the things was 
to write these little letters to yourself and visualize what you would want your reality to be in three months, like a letter to yourself from your future self. Um, so I would like be like, okay, Brittany, this is what's happening in my life. Like these are my friends right now. This is the current, <laughs> you know, drama that's happening in my life. And then I would be like, okay, Brittany, this is how your life's going to be in three months. Let's like sit and visualize it and like how will it feel and what will you be doing? And then I would write these little letters and I had this special box and I would put all the letters in a box and then I would kind of count down the days. I would forget like what I wrote in the letter, but I would always have it in my calendar of when I got to read the letter to myself. And imagine like how lonely I felt as a kid because um, <laughs> my best friend was myself in the future. <laughs> um, wow, I'm like feeling really emotional about that. I just like was really alone. I'm like was so positive and always wanted everything to work out. So I would write these letters and <laughs> and I would always like laugh at myself, even like being like 12, 13, 14 about like, you know, even just three months ago, I was like, I, I liked that guy. That's so dumb, you know, or like, this is the drama that my dad was causing in my life. He's such a fucking idiot. Or just like, you know, all the current shit that was happening in my world. And then I would be like oh wow I manifested that thing that came true like I was starting to realize the things that I was manifesting were actually coming true because I got very very clear on what I wanted and how it felt in my body for it to come true and then I forgot about what I asked for and then I just like put it in a box and you know let it go um so then once I realized that like I could start manifesting things I started asking for more. <laughs> I was like, I want more things. Like, and I didn't mean it again. And I think sometimes I just want to put this out there that I think sometimes when people think they are asking for things in their life, it somehow is taking away from something. So like there's a, they feel like there's this finite amount of things and positivity that you can have in the world. And that if you ask for something, it somehow is taking it away from somewhere else, someone else. And I want to just really put that one to bed as we say in English, which means like, let that one go, that there is a infinite amount of beautiful, positive manifestations that are ready for each and every single one of us. There's an unlimited amount of positive timelines that we can choose to step into. And all we have to do is ask for them. And all we have to do is be super happy and gr grateful and in the vibration of receiving them and allowing that vibration to go through our body. And it doesn't take anything away from anyone else. If anything, it's just creating more positive positivity in the world and we fucking need that, right? So, um, lately I've been reading uh, someone who's channeling, uh, his name is Bashar, and he's talking about um, a very specific set of of guidelines on how to create positive manifestations and when I'm reading this I'm like what because literally I was doing the same thing since I was like 12 uh, intuitively because again I believe that when people channel things and all of this stuff is coming from the same source we're all like through our life experiences through downloading from the universe we're all pretty much getting the same wisdom <laughs> coming through us and we can get it through reading something, we can get it intuitively, we can get it told to us, all the things. So I'm going to share some of this with you because it really helped me. And so this, the, what I was saying in the beginning was like sometimes it's very confusing when people talk about manifesting because a lot of the self-help stuff that I've read in many of the books, I've read like almost every self-help book I can get my hands on growing up. And... Most of it was just like, be positive, you know? And I have experimented with that. And I will tell you from my own life experience that if you just shove a positive thought on top of a negative belief, you will always have the negative belief eventually come through and manifest. And then I was like, what? Why does this keep happening? Like, why can't one be more? Why can't you just affirm, you know, affirmations like I am worthy, I am loved. Da, 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 da. Why can't you just imprint those into yourself enough? Like, why? what is getting messed up here? When, Why is a negative belief outweigh a positive affirmation? That was my question. 
And then I remembered intuitively what I would do. So say I was having some drama in my life or something like that kept looping. Like say you're, you're, you're facing the same type of situation. The universe wants you to learn a lesson, but you cannot figure out the lesson for some reason. You just keep looping into dating the same type of person, into having the same type of a situation with a boss come up where, or whatever, I'm just giving you examples of like the same drama keeps coming up in different ways. And maybe you can figure out that there's a pattern, but you can't necessarily figure out what is going on and what the universe wants you to learn. What is your higher self trying to teach you? So, um, when I was a kid, and I, like I say, yes, for the last, I don't know, 15 years, I have been, um, doing this thing where like when I would hit this kind of overwhelm point where I was like, I can't figure out what is going on. Like, why is this not working? I would sit down in my journal and man, I have hundreds and hundreds of journals. I just had this download over the weekend when I took acid that I think I'm going to do a ceremony and burn all of my journals. Cause for many years I thought I wanted to make some books out of them and like honor. I basically was like, I really wanted to honor all the things I had gone through and imagine that, you know, when you're so alone for most of your life and all of these terrible things happening and your my journal was like my only witness. It was like the only one who really understood all the things that had really been through all of it with me. It was like its own entity. Um, but I, yeah, I don't want to carry that with me anymore. I want to fully step into the now and fully step into the future of all the beautiful things that I'm receiving now. So anyways, I would... When I hit this overwhelm point, I would go to my journal and I would give myself permission to write out every single thing of my thoughts that were looping in my head. So this, okay, if you're looking for the formula of what to do and how to figure out what your lesson is that your higher self is going to teach you, I'm going to, this is, I'm going to, this is a journaling prompt. Please take note. The first step is to sit down in your journal and just write out all the thoughts that are in your head. Do not like give yourself, even if it's like a timer, if you, you need to give yourself permission, you're not used to journaling or you're like, you sit down and you start trying to like structure things because you're, someone taught you need to do that. Then you can put a timer on for three minutes and literally do not stop writing. So just write out whatever is in your head in that moment of just like, I'm so angry. I don't understand da, da, da. And then if you, if you pause, and you don't know what to say next, just write out writing, writing, and then tell the next thought comes through. So this is creating space for you to get through the first layer. So this is the thoughts, like getting out all the thoughts that are looping in your head. What I would do is I wouldn't even time it. I would just like journal for as much as the thoughts need to come out. I wouldn't stop writing. I would just keep writing, writing, writing. And then eventually, you know, my nervous system would calm down and I f would feel heard by my journal. <laughs> and sometimes we do this with a friend, we co-regulate, we, we go and ask them, can you hear me out? I need to talk about something, da, da, da. But I actually really recommend doing it with your journal. And this is also sometimes people do this with therapists, but I find it to be very, very, very growth. Like, I don't know how to say it. It's, um, you can grow ex at an accelerated rate if you do this for yourself because you can sit and look at what you just wrote down and like be your own therapist and be your own friend and be like, did I really think of that? Is that really thoughts that came out of my head? Not in a judging way, but just really look at it, like face it, you know? But don't do that yet. Just write out your thoughts. And then immediately after that, write out how do you feel in your body right now? And so, you know, say something would happen at work with me and like my boss, I was, something was going on and I'd be like, I can't believe she did this, da -da -da, this happened and I don't, da -da -da, and, da -da -da. and then I would write out how do I feel? Like, I feel judged. I feel, you know, s unsafe. I feel like just as many emotions in your body. And another good way to go deeper into this is when I talk about emotions, a lot of people still use <laughs> thinking words. Um, so when I talk about emotions, I'm literally talking about sensations that are happening in your body right now. So that's what it's like energy in motion. And so when you talk about emotions, it's like, uh, my stomach hurts right now. I feel like, I feel sad. I feel like my shoulder is like tight. I feel, I feel some constriction in my body. I feel anger. I feel, you know, all of these things and just give it a lot of space. 
So with that, I'm just take a deep. I feel like I need a deep breath. This is bringing up a lot for me. So deep breath. <coughs> hmm. And then when you go through this, so I'll tell you my journaling prompt, and then I'm going to talk about the thing that Bashar says that the guy's channeling. So I would always talk about my thoughts, emotions, and then what do I actually know? Like, what do I know to be true about the situation? So it was, it was like I was honoring my inner child of just like, this is not fair. Da, 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 this happened. Da, 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 I can't believe da, da, da. And then I'd be like, drop it into my body. Okay, this actually, you know, this hurt my feelings and I didn't feel safe. And then what do I actually know to be true about the situation? So I know that, you know, if it's something with my boss or whatever, I know that she is acting out her insecurity. Like, I would really sit with it and like allow myself to connect to my higher self. Like, what does my higher self trying to tell me about the situation it's like okay my boss is just being insecure right now this is an opportunity for me to speak up for myself like I need to do what is good for me right now and I would just really try and figure out like what was the lesson that was trying to be learned here and then after that after I went past like what do I actually know to be true version the step three in my journaling I would feel you know seen by my thoughts getting my thoughts out I would feel felt by getting my emotions out and then I would feel like okay I actually know what to do next like I know what I need to how do I fix this right and then I basically just did therapy for myself uh, and and then I would just it, it, when you do this it cuts through all the bullshit it's like okay, yeah, I can keep looping about this, but I actually know that this is true. Or like for me, at least within my connection to my higher self, this is what I know to be true in this moment. So if I act on this, at least I'm going one baby step closer to, you know, becoming my higher self. And for me, ever since I was little, I've known that I was meant to do really big things in the world. And so when other people were stuck in their like nine to five everyday dr drama, of just paying their bills or you know fighting with whoever I was always like this is human shit like I need to go beyond this and like who do I need to forgive and like how can I become a better version of myself because I always knew there was something bigger out there for me and for most of my life I never actually said this out loud to anyone because one there wasn't really anyone in my life that would un like understand it like there wasn't really anyone that I like, felt safe to talk to. And then two, even if it was someone that I felt like would understand it, they weren't necessary. They would probably judge me, you know, like who does she think she is? I didn't really care about any of that stuff. So I just kept it to myself, kept my head down. And I was just like, what do I got to learn here? How do I move to the next level? Like ever since I was little, I was really looking at life. Like it was one big game. And how do I rise above? How do I keep going up, up, up within my own little, game of life and it got me to the manifestation of you know at 24 convincing my law firm to let me work remotely and live in a foreign country um and work yeah working remotely in costa rica and then starting my own company with a couple other people a travel company where i traveled around the world like to fit over 50 countries and built communities everywhere had all of the beautiful love stories in the world <laughs> played as much as my little heart desired made made music made a youtube channel my own tv show uh, got locked down on a tropical island in the south of thailand and had my soul family here and built another community and just like really did all the things i feel like i've played out the human timeline to the max and all of it was because I would go through, whenever I would hit these blocks of like, okay, I'm looping here, or I joke in my head, this is human shit, as in like, this is stuff where I could get stuck in this like drama, or I could ask myself, what is the opportunity to learn here? And most of it was, is it, honestly, most of the lessons were like accepting, accepting what was happening and and giving a lot of love to the situation, to the people involved and forgiving people and just knowing everyone was doing the best they could and accepting myself and forgiving myself and knowing I was doing the best I could and then just letting it go and then allowing myself to play and look on the bright side and, and, and really sink into the deep knowing that I was unconditionally loved by myself and the universe 
and all the beautiful people in my life and that everything was always going to get better and that it was the next logical step for things to get better in my life. And then because I believed those things and because that was my deep inner knowing, that is what the universe had to give me because this is something I've known since I was very little is that we create our reality and that we choose what timeline we want to be on. And if we can get very clear on the timeline that we want and get very excited in our bodies and raise our vibrations to meet that timeline, then the universe has nothing else it can do except for to give us that exact timeline that we're asking for. This is also how I manifested my soulmate (laughs) in Ferdinand and how we're just like literally having the best life ever just like bopping around. Like this morning we were in Kosamui, the the island next door we went, we went with our little soul family yesterday to watch avatar 2 and had the best time over there and then this morning we woke up we had the villa that we rented over there for a whole other night and we were all just like no we love Copenhagen more we want to go home so we got on the first boat back and we just bopped around and looked at different houses on the beach we want to rent and then got massages and then got cacao and then took a nap and then made love and then now I'm here making a podcast while he's walking my dog on the beach (sighs) life's amazing um okay so that was my that that journaling prompt that back to business okay (laughs) I'm just kidding Man, I just want to say that my breathing is feeling, maybe it's the way I'm sitting, my breathing is feeling a little bit short right now. So I'm going to breathe a little bit more. I invite you to breathe with me. (coughs) (sighs) So why why does positive affirmations sometimes not work? So I can tell you all these things and then there's going to be some of you who are like, yeah, I tried all of that and it didn't really work for me. And I'll tell you that sometimes I've tried all this stuff and it didn't actually work for me either. And I was like, what is going on? Why is this not working? And so this is where I came to the structure of existence. I'm reading this really amazing book um, called, let me just find the beginning of it. It's called The New Metaphysics and it is channeled by this guy, Bashar, who I was talking about. And if you want a free PDF copy of this, you can message me and I will send it to you. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'm holding up the little PDF copy of it on the video. Um, And in this book, it talks about the, the different structures of how we create our reality and how it's like starting from consciousness. And then the surface layer is our thoughts. So a lot of people are still stuck in the surface layer and this, and this is also what psychiatry is and like psychology is like, let's just get into the brain and like, you know, if we can just analyze your thoughts enough, then we can figure it all out. And that is only the surface level. The next level below that is our emotional reality. And this is also what people are finally starting to tap into. It's like when you can get on the emotional reality of what you want to receive and already be in that emotional reality of great uh, gratitude. So like, I'm so grateful that I'm going to receive $15,000 this month. I'm so grateful. So this is what you start seeing like with um, the law of attraction and like different things about manifesting. It's like, instead of being like, I just, I am rich. I am rich. That's, that's the thoughts. And then the emotions is, I am so grateful that I'm, I'm receiving this money. I'm so grateful that this is happening. I, I, I can like, I'm so excited. So that's getting your emotional reality on board in the manifesting. Why does this n- sometimes not work? Because a layer deeper than that is actually your belief s- structure. So within your belief structure, if you have a belief structure that's like, I actually believe that I need to work really hard in order to receive money, then it doesn't matter how much you say I am rich and how much you say I'm so excited to receive this money. If your belief structure is you get off your butt and go h- work in a job that you do not like, and then, and then maybe one day you will have the money, or never actually probably if that's your belief structure um then the universe and your your higher self is going to everything that you believe it's going to keep reinforcing so instead of waiting for someone else to give you permission that you deserve this money or you deserve the life that you want you deserve to travel you deserve the love that you feel you believe you deserve it's like 
whatever you believe, it's going to keep looping back onto that belief structure. And so I invite you, if things are not working out in the way that you want them in your life, to allow your, give yourself permission to open up the door of your consciousness and really look at your belief structure. And I can give you a good example of this with me is like when I was calling in my soulmate, what does soulmate mean? Like I basically wanted someone on my level, someone who I felt so good with 100% of the time and felt like home base, you know, and someone that was activating and inspiring and turned me on in all the ways and loved me just as much as I loved them. And, you know, the life that we had together, it was better than the life that I had on my own. And my life is really, really good on my own. So <laughs> it needed to be taken to the next level if I was going to like allow this person into my life. And so my thoughts, so, but then like for like five, so I was aware that I wanted this deep of a connection for like five years before it actually came, right? But the thoughts that I had at the beginning when I first wanted this type of connection that I have now with Faraday is I thought, why doesn't this come now? I deserve this. Why do I, why is, do I not deserve this? And it was like the kind of this like, okay, this is the thought level, the surface level. And I was just like bouncing like positive, negative, positive. So the universe was like, here's a guy that likes you. Here's the guy that you don't like. Here's the guy that you like that doesn't like you. And it was just like bopping whatever I thought it was going to give me. And so when I started getting into the thought of like, okay, no, I want a guy who is amazing. And I started like really writing down in my journal, my manifesting of who I wanted to be with. And these people kept showing up exactly what I wrote down they would come, you know, but then they didn't actually feel good. Like, and this is when I started saying, wow, this person is everything I asked for on paper, but it doesn't actually feel good in my body. And then this is when I started getting to, wow, that's very loud. It's a very loud bike outside. Don't know if you guys can hear that. Okay. So I started getting to, when I finally started writing down what I thought, I, what I thought I wanted again, um, what I realized later is I needed to become on the vibration to, in order to attract in the person because I didn't even realize what I wanted because I wasn't at the, the, the point of knowing who I was yet. And if you don't know who you are, there's no home base to attract anyone else into. That's another subject we'll get into in a minute. But in order, I kind of, I feel like <laughs> I did all of this stuff like backwards. And so I'm trying to teach you guys this formula. And so it's easier for you than it was for me. So I would write down all the people, the, the, what I wanted in this person. And then I started writing down, how did I want this? How did I want to feel around this person? How did I want to feel in my body around this person? How did I want to have my friends feel around this person? How did I, yeah, like, like, was this person nourishing for me? Did I feel empowered when I was around them? Did they activate me? You know, like, <laughs> were they just as powerful as I am? Did I feel like I could be in my full power around them? Like all these things. So whatever the emotions were. And then I started really looking at the belief structure of my views around love. And when you are calling in a soulmate, usually I will say normally, usually your belief structure is how you were taught to be. You were taught that love should be in your life and that's how you receive love. So what that means is like whoever taught you love, whoever was your primary caregiver or your parents, how they treated you when you were little and how they gave you love and imprinted you, that is how you initially at least will be um, believing. That, so this is the belief structure below thoughts and emotions. This is how you believe that love should be. And wow, that level for me was pretty fucked up. <laughs> so this is where it got very interesting in my life because I was like, I, I, my thoughts were like, I'm calling in this person. This is on paper, how I want them to be. My emotional reality was like, I wanted to feel really good. I want to feel very taken care of and nourished. I want, da, 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 da. I, I'd love for this to happen. And then my belief structure was, it has to really hurt. Love ha has to hurt up until this certain point, And then I can allow it in. Or the person has to be very, very emotionally unavailable. And then that means they actually love me because <laughs> this is how the love was with my parents. Like my, my dad was very abusive and very emotionally unavailable. And my mom was very vocally always telling me she loved me, 
but then was very helpless emotionally and I would have to take care of her and like help her in her actual 3D life. Like she didn't know how to like do things in the world. And so even from when, I, when my dad was in the hospital and my mom had to work for the first time when I was seven, like I was like helping around the house and like making sure the bills got paid. And like I was very tiny, you know, and I didn't know really what I was supposed to be doing. But I took on this like emotional reality of this is what love is, is you help people even when you don't know what the fuck's going on and you take on things that are not necessarily yours to take on. And so those belief structures I started noticing were coming out in the people that I was attracting into my life. And so I started doing what's called shadow work, where I spent a whole year here on Copenhagen when I first got here in 2020, where I didn't... I chose consciously to not be in a relationship and I started going to shadow work is when you look at your subconscious so your conscious reality is the the reality that you allow yourself to know consciously about yourself and your belief structure and your emotionals your emotional reality your thoughts and your belief structure your subconscious is (laughs) your thoughts emotions and belief structures that you hide from yourself (laughs) <laughs> and this is what shadow work is. It's like looking at the shadows, looking at the things that are belie- below the surface of what you consciously allow yourself to believe and know and feel and think. And on this island, there's a many, many amazing facilitators who do actual things called shadow workshops. And there, I went to a Vipassana retreat, which was a 10-day silent meditation retreat in a Buddhist monastery where you lock your phone away behind three different locks, apparently, like three different layers, and you are silent and meditate for about eight hours a day for 10 days with strangers. And um, I did that. <laughs> and uh, just, I, d- I just tried all the things. I was like, I want to live my most epic timeline. How do I get there? I have to face myself. I have to figure out who I am, not who my parents think I am, not who my friends think I am, not who I think I am. I need to figure out who I actually am. And I really wanted to look at all of my dirt and all the beliefs that got imprinted because they were not even my beliefs. They were beliefs that got imprinted in me from my parents and from my caregivers and from the religion I was raised in. And I even did things like ketamine ceremonies and like I did very specific and hosted very safely psychedelic ceremonies and ayahuasca and DMT. And I was like really looking at myself and what I realized is I had a shit ton of beliefs that were not actually mine, ones I didn't agree with. And every single time I did a Vipassana retreat or I took ayahuasca, I would really look, go deeper and allow myself to face these beliefs, accept that they were my reality up until that point, and then choose, I do not want to have this as my reality anymore. I choose to step into a different timeline and I let them go. And I will tell you that they are actually gone. Like, this is not me saying good vibes only. This is me saying face your shit and let it go. Let it go through you. Not shove it down and pretend to yourself in the world that everything's fine. It's like, honor it. I remember when I did my first ever, um, they call it a hero's journey of mushrooms, which just means like taking a ton of mushrooms. Um, And I was sitting with myself in in the jungle, in the stream, for like eight hours and um, I closed my eyes and like my higher self was the first time that an entity outside of my conscious reality spoke to me and again this was just in my when I had my eyes closed it was like myself talking to me and she was like Brittany we're gonna have a conversation and I was like oh fuck (laughs) because I didn't know I was very from especially being raised in a religion Uh, I went very, the other extreme of like, everything needs to be science-based and proven, da da da. But even though I was a very spiritual person, I think all of us are connected to our spirituality, which is really our connection to our higher selves, right? And when I did this hero dose of mushrooms, my consciousness, my subconscious part of myself that I was not allowing myself to see was given the opportunity to talk to myself. And it was so beautiful. It was my higher self consciously saying, Brittany, This is stuff that what you went through and you can let this go. And I was like, how do I let it go? I really want to let this go. How do I let this go? And what she said to me is, it's not about suppressing it. It's about honoring it. So anytime you have something where you're like, I really don't like this about myself. Why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep doing it? You just, all you have to say to yourself to allow it to go through you is I honor this about myself. 
I honor it, I honor it, I honor it. Because all of those belief structures that were given, even if they were imprinted from our parents, at some point, someone along the way thought that was something that would actually help you. So if you have a belief structure of like, love has to hurt a, s a certain amount before I can accept it, that's actually your inner child being like, I, um, I need to protect myself, so don't open myself up enough. So basically, don't open myself up to be vulnerable because when I was little, I got hurt. And so I need to honor this my little inner child who was really hurt when I was little by my parents and by my religion. And it's okay that she thinks that love has to hurt a little bit uh, in order to allow it to be rece to received. And it's okay that she, you know, holds her heart really close to her chest and like it was really protective over it and that's okay like I honor that I honor that version of myself and that inner child who was so hurt and so alone for so many years and when I allowed myself to honor it I was able to give her a big hug and then I mean these days I can just close my eyes and like imagine my inner child and like I can ask her how do you feel you know and she's always like she'll tell me straight up she'll just be like I don't like him or I want to play, you know, or like when I say these things, like I honor you, I honor you went through so much and like, I, I love you. I can see her just like, you know, being so happy that someone. <laughs> being so happy that someone finally sees her. And I think that's really beautiful when we can do that for ourselves. And like so many people run through the world like hoping that if they love someone enough that then that person will finally see them when really they all they want is to love themselves. <laughs> and so I'm giving all of you full permission to do this for yourself. Like you can you can love yourself in the way that you need to in order to honor yourself and and heal yourself so that you can become complete in yourself <laughs> and when you do that then you go into the final phase of below beliefs is this deep knowingness so it goes from thoughts emotions beliefs and then the, the layer below that is knowingness and knowingness is when I, was, uh, when I would journal and I would be like what do I actually know to be true here and when you can allow yourself to open your subconscious enough and you can go through all of the layers of what people usually block because they're too afraid to look at their own guilt and shame and anything that they think will make themselves unlovable and not connected. And when you go, you honor it and you open all of those things, you connect to your higher self and you really connect to this deeper part of all of, all of us have this and this is this deep knowing that we are all connected and that we all are unconditionally loved by our higher selves and the universe and each other and the earth and that we actually are one big organism breathing together, <laughs> crying together, laughing together. And when you know that deep in your body on a very somatic level somatic means the, the sensations happening in your body when you somatically experience this and allow all the sensations of love to go through your body that we are all connected and that we are unconditionally loved which means that no matter what you do no matter what you don't do no matter how you believe yourself to be unworthy you are actually can never do anything to be not connected. You are always connected to yourself and the universe and the earth and everyone that you love and everyone that loves you. You can literally never fuck that up. The only way that you will feel that you are not connected is if you create a belief structure, which is just your own reality structure that you get to choose. You get to choose, not your parents get to choose this or or your religion, or the government, or whoever the fuck you hang out with, you choose your belief structure. And so when you want to, you can choose to click into the timeline to have a belief structure where you realize you can go deep into this knowingness that you are 
unconditionally loved by the universe. And when you do that, you realize, you realize that you can really just have it all. Like, you can actually rest for once and stop trying to do all the things to feel that you are worthy of love because you realize you're already there. And this is what I say when I say to Faraday and I say to the people I love, you know, we have arrived. Because when you allow yourself to feel this in your body, then you are at home in your body wherever you go because wherever you go, you have this deep inner knowingness that you are so fucking loved. You are so loved by yourself and the universe. And all those times when you felt that you weren't loved and all those times you felt really alone and disconnected, just say, I honor, I honor this time. And how, what can I learn from having this experience? Because our higher selves were always connected to us, our higher minds, whatever you want to call it. And we chose subconsciously to go through these feelings. All of this is connection and disconnection. And when we go through these periods of disconnection and feeling separated from ourselves, our higher selves, or the people that we love, all of it is an opportunity for growth. All of it is a lesson that can be learned. And when we actually choose to learn the lesson, then we immediately bounce back to the, the realization and the deep inner knowingness that we are always connected. I mean, my parents and my, fa my, my two sisters and my parents and all the people that I grew up with, all my family are Jehovah's Witnesses, and all of them have chosen to not speak to me anymore. So from the age of 24 onward, it's like black. Like everyone that I grew up with, everyone that I loved, everyone that I made a life with, they're all gone. That is the ultimate disconnection. And I could have killed myself. <laughs> a lot of people would have. I could have gone back into the religion. I actually did. <laughs> I got reinstated in it, to it because I thought that's what I wanted. And then immediately after I realized that's not what I want. And I left again <laughs> and but I couldn't go back and just fake it I couldn't I already had this connection to my higher self my whole life and I couldn't sit there and choose disconnection from myself in order to feel connected to my family and the community I was in because to me that was already suicide if I did that that was me killing my connection to my higher self because I was doing something I knew wasn't good for me and wasn't good for my emotional reality. It didn't feel safe in my body. And so I chose disconnection from them. And, and then even after that, for many years, I was like, why the fuck did this happen to me? You know, like I've always just been this little bundle of joy and unconditional love. Like why, why is there so much disconnection in my life? And, you know, so many people could have just sat in that poor me. And, and for me, I wasn't wallowing in it like a victim. I was just like, I miss my family. <laughs> I really miss my family. And, um, you know, most days, like, I let it go. And I just keep going. And I build a family. I, I call it a chosen family. But some days it's really hard. And there's still days that I like want to pick up the phone and like call my mom and just tell her everything that's going on and tell her that I'm in love and I'm so happy. And then like the only thing I can do to like make sure that I don't go crazy <laughs> is I just ask myself like what's the opportunity here, you know, like... Again, if I chose to get stuck in this loop of like, why did this happen to me? That is what I call getting stuck in human shit. <laughs> and I've always wanted to rise above this. And so I ask myself, like, what is the lesson here? Like, what can I actually learn? What's the opportunity? And for me, it's like, I have, I have faced what most people will never face in their life, which is 
everyone they ever known choosing choosing consciously to disconnect from them like the ultimate amount of disconnection i have felt that <laughs> and it almost feels worse because these people are not actually dead they're they're out there living and they're just choosing to not be in my life and um and then i realize it's okay because i I I have my connection to source energy. Like I have my connection to my higher self and I know deep in my gut that I am always protected. I am always loved. And for whatever reason, if they are not meant to be in my life right now, then they don't they don't deserve to be in my life because I know that <laughs> I'm always going to have a beautiful life and bring such joy and love to everyone in my life and I only uh, allow the people into my life that are going to honor that and choose to make that a beautiful thing and you know my family choosing to not be in my life is them not honoring that about me that they like the only reason why they will not be in my life is because they want me to be in the religion and i told them that, that that doesn't feel good in my body and then they said well then we don't want you in our lives and this is why i say on all of my podcasts if you speak up for what is feels good in your body and you honor it and then you tell other people i need to do this because it honors my body and this is what feels good in my body and if they do not honor your body they do not deserve to be in your life and it does not matter if they are your family because we are here as individuals on this beautiful timeline to connect to our higher selves and connect to our chosen family. And so, wow, this podcast is a lot more emotional than I was expecting. Um, but I just want to be real with you guys because so many people look at my life and they're like, wow, she must like have it so good. You know, like I've had some people think like that I'm like this trust fund kid, which just means like my family must have a lot of money and like support me. And I'm like, you really don't know me, do you? <laughs> like, I've been supporting myself since I was 16 years old. Everything I've ever had in my life, I have worked f for or manifested. Um, and I have completely created my reality all the way through. And now I have such an amazing soul family and chosen family that's spread out over the whole world. I'm messaging them constantly all the time and sometimes I forget to even message them because my my literal physical reality that's happening right now on this island with Ferdinand and all of my best close friends here is so epic and so amazing that a lot of times I forget to even look at my phone and then I open my phone and there's so much love there and so many people who that want to talk to me and get on calls and they're all people that I love so much and it's just like such an abundance of love that feels good all the way through going back and forth between me and these beautiful humans that I love and respect and honor and I'm just like wow I am overwhelmed with gratitude for the life that I have and I'm overwhelmed with the beauty of everything to come and this is not even talking about all the things that I'm manifesting right now and all the things I know deep in my knowingness that are coming into existence and um one more tip I'll give you is that when you are in this vibrational shift between allowing yourself to really look at your beliefs and and getting to your own version of your own knowingness, I really encourage you to spend some time alone. You will know and deepen your body what that means and how, how to honor it. So I don't want to put too many boxes around this. I'm just saying that like there was there is very specific periods of my life where I was doing a big shift and really looking at myself and I spent a lot of time alone because when you are around the people that you are around all the time, they are reinforcing the personality structure that they, that you are representing to them and they are representing to you. So like, like you and your best friend, it's like you have a certain rhythm of how, who, how you hang out and what you talk about and this and that. And if you want to change who you are, it is a good thing to take a step back and just spend some time alone and like start looking at these things and build this relationship with yourself. And so I see this on the island a lot here, this like pattern of people who come and they go into like the party vibe and they, you know, 
they're in the meetups and they're going to all the events, the static dances, everything. And then suddenly I don't see them around anymore and I bump into them and they're like, oh, Brittany, I just, I've been spending a lot of time alone and this and that. And whenever they say that, I'm always like, you don't even realize that you are the most on track here. Cause they're saying it to me like they're apologizing. Like, oh, I'm sorry. I haven't been around. It's not. And I'm like, I just interrupt them. I'm like, I honor you. I honor you doing your thing. Like do your thing and come into your full power because whenever you do that, then you give yourself the space to connect to your deep inner knowing. And it's like going into a little cocoon. And when you come out, you're an even more beautiful butterfly. And then when you come out, this is a very vulnerable moment when you're like, hi guys, this is a new version of me, you know, and it can be in the way you talk in the way that you're doing things, maybe, you know, you've shifted some of your habits. Like I've had different timelines where I, you know, stopped smoking weed or I stopped drinking officially. Like I never really drank, but like, you know, I just like didn't, didn't feel good in my body or I didn't feel good in my body to eat meat. I and mean, I didn't really eat meat. <laughs> it didn't feel good in my body to eat fish anymore. I didn't feel good in my body to have dairy products. And I just remember when I first officially was vegan and like a lot of my friends, I don't, I don't like publicize and shout from the world that I'm vegan. It's just, this is who I am, you know? And I remember the first time like telling one of my best friends, like, yeah, I am officially vegan now. And her just being like, no, but that means we can't eat all the food together anymore. And I just remember thinking, okay, this is part of readjusting to, you know, this is my new reality of who I am. And like your friends will either accept that and honor that. And if they don't, again, they do not deserve to be in your life. And so I just, I'm just saying all of this because I don't want to give you all these tools. You do them and then it's hard. <laughs> it's like, it actually can be really beautiful and fun and say, feel really safe if you give yourself the space to go through it in a way where it's, um, where it's like, you can adjust. It's like you're like your newborn baby, you know, like a newborn baby, when they come out, the person's like, not like, what are you doing? Why are you changing? Why are you making those new sounds? Why are you doing that? It's like the baby just is a baby and everyone's like celebrating that it's like a new life in the world. Well, you are allowed and I give you permission at any single moment to go into a cocoon and come out as a new little baby butterfly and just be like, I'm a baby butterfly. I have a new version of myself. I'm finding out myself and who I am. And you will f find that you become as you strip all these layers off more and more of your authentic self. And when you do this, you literally will glow from the inside out. I have had people tell me, like stop me in the street and say, there is something about your eyes. They're like literally glowing. And I'm just like, I don't know, this is just me. And I want this for everyone because when you do this, the whole world moves for you, babes. Like the whole world moves for you the universe gives you more energy when you are your authentic self and when you move from this deep place of inner knowing and this is when i say like you can really manifest whatever reality you want if you go through these phases and you're willing to really look at yourself and honor everything all the way through Whew. okay well <laughs> again this is another podcast from Brittany Bond. I'm just like laughing at myself because I always, again, this is just who I am. Whatever comes out. I had like one paragraph of notes for this podcast and then everything else that came out is what came out. Um, I'm always here for any of your feedback and anything that really resonated with you or things that you want to learn more about. And again, if you want a copy of this new metaphysics um, PDF, just message me and I on Instagram and I'm happy to um, send you over a copy of it. I hope that this helps and just know that you are very much loved by myself and the universe and I invite you to do less today and to be more. <laughs> and what I mean by that is give yourself permission to just spend some time alone with yourself and do something that is nourishing for you and your body and your soul. And whether that's being in nature or taking a bath or getting a massage or journaling 
And like if you journal, you can write a little letter to yourself and say, I love you. I'm doing like sometimes I'll all the time. I write little letters to myself. I'm like, Brittany, I'm so proud of you. You're doing so amazing. I, I honor everything that you've been through. And it was really great the other day when you spoke up for yourself and like you really honored your body when you did that thing. And like I just am like my own little cheerleader. And so I invite you to do this for yourself and and see how much it really helps. <laughs> it really does help. Or spend some time with someone that you love and that really honors you to be your authentic self and is there to remind you of your power even when you're down. Like last night, I was feeling really emotional. I feel really emotional a lot, but last night I was feeling emotional in the way where I could use some co-regulation and we went and saw Avatar and like with all of our friends and we went back to the villa and like everyone's like bopping around doing stuff and they all could tell that I'm like, emotional and like not really talking that much and it was just because I um I really want to talk to Faraday about it first and so like when everyone went to bed him and I were laying in bed together and and I and he was just like how are you doing in your body how are you feeling and I just started crying I was like ah! <laughs> and I was just like I feel all these things and and I I feel like 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 sometimes I just feel like you know I want someone to look up to and I want I want people who f are more ahead of it than I am and I want I, mean, I don't want to be the one paving the way I want to be the kid and then he reminded me of my power and he was just like we are in this together and you are so powerful and we are going to do it together and it's okay that we don't know what happens next and as long as we just keep doing what feels good in our bodies and we keep honoring ourselves and I love you so much and you know that you are always loved and protected by me and the universe and I will always be your family I will always be here for you and I was just crying and he was holding me this is what I mean Th these are the people <laughs> that you should have in your life these are the people that remind you of your power and help you come back to your authentic self and remind you of your connection to your deep inner knowing and and that we are all loved and we are all on path as long as you are doing what feels good in your body and honoring yourself and following what is your personal highest excitement then you are always on path okay i love you this is Brittany bond signing off